Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide that's made available online. Okay, and if you need access, all you need to do is put this link into your search bar, into your email, and click submit. Okay, you may then get an email to confirm it, and you'll just have to do that once. Okay, and after doing so, you'll have access to the reference guide. And now we are in part eight down here, and we are going to look at acute pericarditis. Okay, now. If you've been following along, you've noticed that we've gone through all the general features, what's a normal EKG, what are P-wave or atrial abnormalities, different types of rhythms, whether it's um, atrial, uh, junctional, as well as ventricular rhythms. We looked at conduction delays at the AV node. We looked at ventricular and uh, access, as well as hypertrophy, okay, voltage criteria, intraventricular conduction delays such as bundle branch blocks and non-specific delays in the ventricles as well as myocardial infarctions and ST changes. So now we're in clinical disorders. We've looked at a few already but now we'll look at acute pericarditis in this lecture. So let's get started. So acute pericarditis, okay, this is a patient that's presenting with pleuritic chest pain okay that's often positional and may come on after maybe a virus okay viral or idiopathic causes are the most common uh, cases now the EKG can be quite helpful in this case okay and that's why we want to know what are the changes we can expect to see so what do you want to see and how you want to differentiate this from an ST elevation MI are some of the following findings so we want to see diffuse ST segment elevation okay and what you see here in this EKG is that these complexes are elevated these ST segments and even this one here is slightly elevated in V2 V3 V4 V5 and V6 so essentially diffuse meaning widespread ST elevation in the majority of the leads not so much in lead 3 here but you can often see it in that one as well and you also have concomitant ST or PR depression okay so if we remember if you look at our complexes again remember this is your P wave this is your QRS complex in this way this is an RS complex but in general a QRS complex a T wave and then we have our PR interval which is this and we have our ST segment from our J point to the beginning of the T wave so that's the ST segment and we also have a PR segment. The PR segment is this one here. So this is the PR segment. So after the P wave up until the QRS complex. And so what we see in this is we often see diffuse PR segment depression. So this drops down and the ST segment goes up. Okay. And so what you see here is you see an elevated ST segment and you can see start to see these depressed PR segments. Okay. So that's essentially what you're looking for. You can see it here in lead two as well. Okay, so you're looking for that and you're looking for it to be diffuse, meaning that it's not only in a few leads, but throughout the EKG. Okay, the whole pericardium uh, layer is being inflamed and that's why you're seeing these changes. And you're also going to see what we consider almost reciprocal changes in lead AVR and then sometimes in lead V1. Okay, so instead of seeing the PR segment depressed, you'll see PR segment elevation and ST segment depression, okay? So if you look at here's AVR, notice that your PR segment's up and the ST segment's are down, okay? And maybe a little hard to see here in V1, you can see the ST segment depression, maybe not so much the PR elevation, but uh, hopefully that makes sense. So it's the characteristic uh, changes that you expect to see and really the there's a few criteria that you want to look out for you want to look for the characteristic chest pain that they have that pleuritic positional chest pain the EKG changes evidence of um, uh, any maybe a fusion around the heart as well okay and those are some of the characteristic findings you're looking for okay so hopefully that makes sense now what we want to be aware of is to not confuse this with an ST segment elevation MI okay so note if there's diffuse ST segment elevation in the both the inferior and the lateral limb leads a more global process which is pericarditis as we've been talking about is more likely however 
in a STEMI or an ST elevation MI, this usually is more focal elevation, okay, uh, localized to more of a single artery distribution. So imagine you had an inferior MI or STEMI. Maybe you would expect ST elevation in 2, 3, in AVF, okay, and then reciprocal ST depression in the lateral leads, such as 1 in AVL, or vice versa, okay, if it was a lateral MI. So those are the th changes you're seeing. But in this case, notice that we see ST elevation in these lateral leads as well as in the inferior leads. And then you can also see them here pretty much in the anterolateral leads. So with that diffuse ST segment elevation almost throughout the whole EKG and then that characteristic presentation of pericarditis, um, those symptoms is most likely the cause. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's see. Um, so. Again, just to review, you're looking for diffuse ST segment elevation in PR depression, and then sometimes you'll see that reciprocal changes in lead AVR, especially where you have PR elevation and the ST segment depression. Well, that's all I got you for you in this lecture, and I hope you learned something. Have a great day. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay. So completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay. These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course. Okay, um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful, and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on. Okay, and then you also get our pocket. EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, 
you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.